Brother Joe Arthur, and welcome to our live service today. I trust the music and the message will be a blessing to you and your family. I trust God will meet a need in your life as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Welcome to our service. It's now in progress. Come on in. We have met to worship. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here I'll understand. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I leave this world of sorrow, I mean to know more than I know now. He promised when, he promised when his soul ascended. I'm coming back, the Lord did say, if on his promise you depended on wings of love. Hello, 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 hello. I want to know hello, more hello. about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that home. I mean to go there someday, somehow, and after I leave, I mean to know more than I know now. All right, you know how you play a little bit, then you let your instrumental, let's take a break. Beth, you play on that next verse right there and everybody play with you, but you take out on a special here, let's clap for them and then, yeah. Turn that red microphone up loud. We're going to have a little dough bro here. Wesley, you come up and break dance. We're going to have a time. Yeah, Brian, go off on that thing. All right, we go that chorus. Here we go. I want to know more. Not my Jesus. I want to know more. Not my Jesus. I want to know more. Be glad to be in the house of the Lord. Say amen. And I trust we'll be praying today for our folks that are sick and those that's in quarantine and those that's in the mental hospital and those of us that are on the way. Praise God. 
and pray for our nation, pray for our families, pray for the service today. We're glad to have with us all day today Brother Brian McBride, and he'll preach this morning and tonight and every Sunday this year we've had some guest preachers in and some wonderful, wonderful preaching of the Word of God and we're just thankful for that. How many got a special need today? You believe the Lord's able to meet that need? We're glad to have uh, Brother Shu and Brother Patton. These are Rock of Ages missionaries. Uh, they're either out of jail or on their way to jail or trying to put somebody in jail and we're glad they stopped by with us today. Uh, you guys headed to a meeting somewhere? No. And uh, God bless you boys. We're glad you're here. We love it anytime visitors come by and be with us here at Harvest. We love our missionaries that work in and out of our church, those we support. And I'm so glad that even in the midst of a pandemic, the world still needs missionaries. And God uses the gifts of his people to get that done. And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Let's pray together, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, it's good to be here today. And Lord, it's good to not be by ourselves. I'm glad you're with us. And I pray that everything today, Lord, will resound to the glory of God. Bless every song. And then as our dear brother comes to preach the word of God, give him extreme liberty that he may declare the unsearchable riches of the grace of God. We pray, Lord, for our people that are sick. We pray for those that are in quarantine. We pray for those that have loved ones uh, at the point of death. We pray for those, Lord, that, that have bereavement in their heart. We ask you, God, today that your grace and your mercy will be sufficient, and I know that it will be. And, Lord, what you do for us today, we'll thank you and we'll give you praise because we ask it in the name above every name, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said hallelujah. You may be seated. Come on, this is what's left of our choir.
You may be seated. I'm glad we're on holy ground because the Lord's here. the Lord let's stand together I, I tell you what while they're coming down while you're standing I, I, I believe he's still here from Wednesday night brother we had the best service Wednesday night I believe we've ever had in the 38 years I, I've been here usually on Wednesday night you know we just kind of meet and greet and go, but I'll tell you one thing the Holy Ghost sat down in here and I'm I didn't get over it to Friday and here we are again I believe he's buzzing around here and want to do something again today 
God is on the throne and he'll be as real to us as we'll let him be. Throw open the gable into your soul and say, God, come in. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we're part of the family of God? Wave at somebody. Smile at them. Fellowship at your own risk. You ready? Here we go. I'm so glad I'm a part of in the fountain cleansed by his blood join heirs with Jesus as we travel the sun for I'm part of the family. Here we go. One more time, here we go. Well, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel the sun. For I'm part of the family. Oh, the family of God. Thank you. You may be seated. We greet you in the name of the Lord. And uh, Brother Brian, what's the name of the church you're a member of? Bean Blossom Baptist Church. Bean Blossom Baptist Church in Bean Blossom, Indiana. Now, if you don't know bluegrass, that town means nothing to you. But if you know bluegrass, that is the Bill Monroe. He always had the big bluegrass festival. The reason why you don't know everybody left their stone, but anyway, their church is in quarantine and they're doing online and they are joining us today. So let's make welcome Bean Blossom Baptist Church, Bean Blossom, Indiana. Several churches on the east coast of North Carolina and Virginia are snowed out today and they are joining us. So all of you churches that's joining us, send us all your tithes and offerings today. I felt something on that, Humphreys. I did. I really I felt something on that. But we greet you in the name of the Lord and our listeners that's contacted us this week. We're honored that you're joining us. And we got a little lady that's been joining us, and she just sent an email that she needs a miracle from God. And sweetheart, all of us do and you especially, and God is able to meet your need. Let's welcome our internet audience. We're honored to have them today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget now the service tonight at 6 p.m. Brother Brian will be back with us, and we're just going to have a wonderful day of singing and preaching. By the way of announcements, the Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, uh, I'm going to start saying that. Lord willing and Corona don't get worse, but we're going to try to go back to choir Sunday school first Sunday in February. We'll just have to play that by ear, but we just need to press on the best we can and continue to pray for all of our folks that's dealing with this. Pray for churches and pastors everywhere, evangelists. This is a trying time, but I don't believe any of this caught God by surprise, and I believe we're on the threshold of something great happening in this country. I said to Miss Arthur the other day, I read an article where after Biden made his speech about Russia and the Ukraine and uh, how we're on the crux of being in a war with Russia over Ukraine and uh, all the media outlets, you know, they say we're just a, a, a few steps away from all that. My mind went back, Brother Earl, to a Maze Jackson service that I went to when I was 18 years old. Now, when I was 18 years old, Ronald Reagan was the president of this country. And he had invented the Star Wars and all of the military things to keep us safe. So Brother Mays Jackson at the Welcome Baptist Church in Caswell County, North Carolina, Blanche, North Carolina, the third Sunday of April when I was 18 years old was preaching about how Russia is going to uh, invade the countries around it 
make its way to Jerusalem and fulfill Ezekiel 38 and 39. And uh, he said, I know you think President Reagan and all of the Star Wars. And someone says, how can a nation as powerful as America? I mean, I mean, you know, we're we, we going we to protect the world because we got the power. And that man of God, only like a prophet, leaned across that pulpit with that crooked finger and said, by the time that day comes, America will be so financially strapped, morally broken. Listen to what he said, morally broken. Nobody in this world better depend on America to keep them safe. He said, we'll have people in the White House that won't respect the Jews and Israel, that will detest the military and the police. Brother, it's like a prophet. And we're living in days where, brother, any moment now, the trumpet's going to sound and the saints of God are going to get out of here. And if you're in love with this old world and you want to stay behind, y'all have fun. But I'm glad I'm a member of the church of the living God. And a virus and political schemes, financial markets, all of that may destroy a nation. But Jesus said, upon this rock, and he wasn't talking about the Methodist church and the Baptist church and the Catholic church. He's talking about that body of born-again believers that's been washed in the blood and regenerated by the Holy Spirit. I will build that church, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So what I'm saying is this today. If you don't know the Lord, get in because the time is right and brother, we ought to walk out of this building up and say, even so come Lord Jesus. Well, glory to God, that's message number one. Brian's got number two. But I want to tell you, God knows what he's doing in this day. And this is an exciting time to be alive. Well, that's our announcements today. Come with a special song. And we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. And uh, God bless you. It's good to see you today. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. All right? Who's singing for us today? Brother Tom, well, if you do as good tonight as you did Wednesday night, we'll shout the victory. How many love Brother Tom? Ain't he a blessing? How many like Miss Beth more than you like Brother Tom? <laughs> Dr. Larry Brown made a quote that I've not forgot. He said in a message, he came and got you when he could have stayed and forgot you. He came and got you when he could have stayed and forgot you. It got the best of me. He came and got you when he could have stayed and forgot you. I'm glad he came to me. The gulf that separated me from Christ my Lord It was so fast The crossing I could never afford From where I was To his demands It seemed so far I cried, dear Lord I cannot come to where you are. So he came to me. He came to me. I could not come to where he was. He came. To me, that's why he died on Calvary. When I could not come to 
knew where he was, he came to me. He came to me when I was bound in the rags of my sin. And he came to me when I possessed no hope within. He picked me up and drew me gently to his side. Where today in his sweet love I now abide. For he came to me. come to where my Jesus was he came to me that's why Jesus died on Calvary I could not come to where he was he came to me that's why my sweet Jesus died on Calvary when I could not come to where he was. He came, he came. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 1981, I went to go preach at a place called Greer Baptist Camp Meeting. I was in my teens. And I walked up, and Billy Kelly said, Joe, I want you to meet somebody. He said, I want you to meet Brian McBride. I was in my teens, and Brian was in his 40s. I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> early 20s. And he said, I want you boys to be friends, love one another, serve God together, and I want you to continue on after I'm gone. And all these many years, he says we're still friends. I say we're friends. And I've watched him and his family grow up, and he's watched me grow out. You'll get that in a minute. But I love him in the Lord. Did we ever dream as young men that God would do what he did? Only God. I'm telling you, you can't beat serving God. And I love this man of God, and I know you do too. And he has an open invitation to come here anytime he wants. He may not get paid every time, but I'm telling you, he can come. And I want you to make welcome from Bean Blossom. Amen, Brother Brian McBride. All right, we're going to be in the book of Ephesians in the second chapter is where we'll start. I want to thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for the, Brother Joe, for the invitation to come. I'm glad to have my sweetheart with me today. And uh, my wife Sherry is here. And I'm thankful for that. And uh, sometimes I have to travel without her, but I don't like it. And so I'm glad that she's here. And we're glad to have the folks from Bean Blossom that are tuned in today. My pastor and his wife are sick with the COVID. My youngest daughter, Bethany, is up there taking care of them, so she has it too. So you pray for them and uh, that the Lord will help them. I want to spend a few moments this morning in the book of Ephesians. I will say this. Brother Joe's talked about our friendship. I love Brother Joe Arthur, and uh, he's been my friend a long, long time, and uh, I think he's the man of God and the power of God's on him, and I'm glad to be associated with him. And I appreciate him, appreciate his family. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11, the Bible said, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, 
who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus, him Christ, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all, let me start this again, verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Now, that's a little bit of reading there, but I want to spend a few moments this morning and I want to talk to you about fellowship. Paul has an unusual thing that he does in the Bible when he begins to talk about fellowship. Here's what he'll do. He'll take the word fellow and he'll drop the ship off the end and he'll add another word. You'll find him doing it throughout the New Testament. Uh, you'll find him using this word. He'll talk about fellow soldiers. He'll talk about that in the book of Philemon. Then he'll talk about fellow prisoners. That's also found in the book of Philemon and then also I think in the book of Ephesians or it may be Colossians. He'll talk about fellow laborers. Now, the fellow, I call that the military fellowship. The fellow prisoners, I call that the manacled fellowship. And Paul would teach us that sometime our fellowship, we're hindered and limited in what we can do. Paul was like that when he was in the prison, a fellow prisoner. But while he's in the prison, he wrote letters and those letters went all the places that Paul could not go and people are still being blessed and helped by those letters today. Sometimes you feel like you're limited. Just go ahead and serve God anyway. God will do more than you can imagine with what you do. He'll talk about the fellow laborers. I call that the missionary fellowship. Paul talks about fellow laborers, fellow workers, uh, uh, fellow ministers. That's all involved in that missionary fellowship. I'm glad to be part of the missionary fellowship today involved in the work of God. But what I'm interested in this morning for the next few moments is what I'm going to call the mystery fellowship, the mystery or the mysterious fellowship. And Paul deals with that here in Ephesians. There is a mysterious fellowship that he talks about, and it is the fellowship of Gentile and Jew together. Now, the fact that the Jew or the Gentile would be saved was not a mystery anywhere in the Bible. It's talked about in the Old Testament. But the mystery was that God was going to take of Jew and Gentile and get them in Christ and make of them a new thing called the church. That's why Paul said, give none offense, neither to the Jew nor to the Gentile nor the church of God and I want to talk to you about the fellowship in church now somebody will say preacher what do you mean by fellowship well 
When I think about fellowship, I, I wrote it down this way. We possess something. I possess something. What is it I possess? I possess eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. I possess something, and I want to do something with what I possess, and I want to do it with somebody who possesses the same thing that I possess. So I want to fellowship with you because you have the same salvation that I have. You have the same Holy Ghost that I have. You have the same Bible that I have. You have the same Lord that I have. I tell you, I feel good fellowshipping with the people of God now we're living in a day when fellowship is at a premium because everybody's divided a sickness has divided us other things have divided us but I want to talk to you about fellowship for a little bit and the mysterious fellowship now Paul will use this I'm going to give you a few things and we'll bring it down to the end here in a little bit but Paul will use this word mystery he likes to talk about mysteries he'll use it 20 times in the New Testament he'll talk about particular mysteries. Now, a mystery in the Bible is not something that God wants you to find clues to, that he wants you to go around, find a clue here and find a clue there and figure out the mystery. That's not a mystery in the Bible. Bible mystery is this. There is something that God has kept covered until the time is right and then he uncovers it and lets us know about that mystery. And Paul talks about this mystery here. He calls it in verse 3, the revelation he made unto me of the mystery and that mystery is that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel so the mystery that Paul's going to talk about is fellow heirs and fellow citizens and I want to talk to you about that but let me mention this when you think in book in the book of Ephesians six times Paul will use the word mystery and he'll refer to three mysteries in the book of Ephesians. I want to mention them to you. First of all, he'll talk about what I call the gathering ministry. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Paul will say this in verse 9 having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him now I call this the gathering ministry and it is a mathematical mystery and I call it that for this reason when Paul said that God will gather everything in Christ, if you look up that word gather and look up that little phrase, it's talking about to sum up a summation. Now, I never was very good at math. But if I were to use a blackboard, and some of you parents can explain to your teenagers what a blackboard is, but if I were to use a blackboard this morning and I got that blackboard and I filled it with numbers, there's numbers all over the place, and you'd come in, you look up at that blackboard or that screen, and there's numbers all over the place, and you look at them, you say, that don't make a lick of sense. But if you took all those numbers and put them in the right order in a column, put a line under them and add them all up, you'd get a sum. Now, all all those numbers have become part of something, part of that sum. You know what God is saying in Ephesians 1? He's saying when you look at life, it doesn't make a bit of sense. When you look at everything going on, it's a little something here and a little something there and a little something there and it makes no sense. There's no rhyme to reason. But when you sum it all up in Christ Jesus, everything that didn't make sense starts to make sense. Life makes sense, but it only makes sense if it's summed up in the Lord Jesus Christ and gathered up. You you will never make sense of your life until you know Jesus and get in Christ. And when you get in Christ, ha, ha, hallelujah, everything starts to fall in place. Everything begins to make sense. Jesus is the answer to all the questions of life. So there is the gathering mystery. It's mathematical. It has to do with a revelation of the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Paul will talk about another mystery. It is the gospel mystery. It is a membership 
fellowship mystery. It has to do with a dual fellowship, and it is a revelation of the household of Christ. Now, we notice this in chapter 6. It says, And for me, verse 19, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. What's he talking about? He's talking about membership. You know what happened to me when I got born again? I got membership. I got membership in the family of God. I got membership in the household of Christ. I was born into it. I didn't, I didn't make a decision into it. I didn't grow into it. I didn't join the church into it. I didn't get baptized into it. I was birthed into it by the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God by faith. And I became part of membership in the household of Christ. Then there is in chapter number six a revelation of the mystery or, or excuse me, uh, the great mystery in chapter five. In chapter five it is a matrim matrimonial mystery. Now listen to what it said. This is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You remember Ephesians 5? Husbands love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might uh, wash it. He wants to present it spotless. He nourisheth it and cherisheth it. What's he talking about? That great mystery is a matrimonial mystery. That when I got saved, uh, I became the wife of Jesus, the bride of Christ. I'm in the bride. I'm in the family. Uh, it is a revelation of the heart of Christ that God, the Lord Jesus, loves us like the groom loves the bride. I'm glad he he loves me today. Nobody else might care, but Jesus loves me today. So there are the mysteries. Now, here's what I want to talk to you about. This fellowship mystery. Fellow citizens and fellow heirs. Three things I want you to see. Number one, the foundation of this mysterious fellowship. The foundation of it. Now, Paul called it a mystery. So if it's a mysterious fellowship, something the world can't understand, something the lost can't understand, but you and I that are part of this fellowship understand it. If it's a mystery fellowship, it must be based on mysterious things. It is based, first of all, upon a mysterious incarnation. Paul said, he said without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached on among the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory Paul said it's a mystery somebody said preacher I can't understand the fact that God became man and he was altogether God and altogether man I know you can't I can't either it's a mystery but I believe it I believe Jesus was God and is God and always will be God he was not less than God in Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth but in John 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and then in verse 14 the Bible said and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth if in Genesis 1 God made the world and in John 1 Jesus made the world all I can say is Jesus must be God otherwise we got a contradiction and there are no contradictions in the Bible I'm not just serving a great prophet I'm not just serving a great leader I'm not just serving a great moral man I'm serving God manifest in the flesh a mysterious incarnation Oh, I need, I need to move on, but I just got to say this. Them, those Jews would go down to that tabernacle, that temple, and they'd walk in that temple to meet with God and standing outside the door. God was awaiting on them. Jesus was standing there. God manifest in the flesh. One day Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said, Have I been so long with you, Philip, yet you've not known me? He that's seen me has seen the Father. I want to remind you, Jesus is God. It's based upon a mysterious incarnation. It's based upon a mysterious habitation. In Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> 
Moses came out of or Moses was there. He came out of Egypt and he's out there on the backside of the desert and he's out there tending sheep and he walks up one day and he sees a bush and in the bush there's a fire. The Bible doesn't say the bush was in the fire. The Bible said the fire was in the bush. That word bush is the word senna. It means thorny. It was an old thorny bush and so in the midst of that old thorny bush there was a fire burning and Moses walked up. He said, I'll now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. You know what he was saying? He's saying what two things could be more incompatible than an old dry thorny bush and a hot burning fire. Those two things are not compatible. I'll tell you two things that are less compatible than that. A holy God and a hell deserving sinner. But just like that Shekinah glory burned in that bush, the glory of God burns in me today. He dwells in me in the person of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, what know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Wherefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. The moment I got saved the Holy Ghost of God moved in and took up residence in me and he lives in me. Somebody said well preacher why did he get excited? I can't help it every now and again the old flesh gets out of the way and the Shekinah glory of God gets to shining out. Thank God he lives in me. Does he live in you? The Bible said in Romans if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his. If he doesn't live in you, you're not his. But if you're his, he lives in you. That's a mysterious thing. And then it's based upon a mysterious transformation. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither of corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Paul said it's a mystery, but I tell you what's going to happen one of these days uh, he said there'll be a mysterious transformation that will take place this corruptible will put on incorruption this mortal will put on immortality it'll happen in a moment it'll happen in the blinking of an eye it'll happen at the last trump our brother was talking about a little while ago we'll be raised the Bible said there'll be the trump the voice of the archangel shout the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words there is a mysterious fellowship the foundations and then I want you to think about this the forming of this mysterious fellowship how does it happen how did this fellowship get formed it got formed through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ I won't take time to mention all of this but if you look at our situation our separation and our salvation it's all found there in Ephesians chapter 2 but let me just give you an illustration years ago I was reading a book by John Phillips and he gave this illustration about getting in the fellowship he said one day a Moabite came over the hill and he looked down and there was the camp of Israel and when he looked down and saw the camp of Israel he saw in the midst of it that tabernacle. So he wandered down to the edge of the camp and there's an Israelite standing there and that Moabite said, what is that thing in the middle of your camp? He said, that's the dwelling of God. He said, the dwelling of God. He said, that's where God lives. He said, you mean God lives in that tabernacle? And that Jew said, yeah. And that Moabite said, I'd like to go in there. i sure like to see God. That Jew would look at him and say, now just, just who are you again? He said, well, I'm a Moabite. He said, oh, you can't go in there. You're not allowed to go in there and get in the presence of God. He said, I can't go in there. He said, no, you're a Moabite. You can't go in there. He said, well, is there any way I could go in there? He said, you'd have to be an Israelite. You'd have to be born in Israel and be an Israelite. He said, you mean if I was an Israelite, I could go into that tabernacle and see God? He said, well, not exactly. He said, not only would you have to be an Israelite, but you'd have to be of the tribe of Levi. 
So he said, if I was an Israelite and of the tribe of Levi, I could go in and see God. He said, well, not exactly. You'd have to be an Israelite of the tribe of Levi and of the family of Aaron. So he said, if I was an Israelite and a Levite and of the family of Aaron, I could go into the presence of God. Well, not exactly. You'd have to be an Israelite of the tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron, and you'd have to be the high priest. So if I was an Israelite of the tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron and the high priest, I could go in? Well, not exactly. You'd have to be an Israelite and a Levite, tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron and the high priest, and then you could only go in once a year. So if I were an Israelite and a Levite and of the tribe of Aaron and the high priest, once a year I could go in? Well, that's not all there is to it. He said you'd have to be a an Israelite and of the tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron and the high priest you go in once a year but you could only go in with blood that Moabite would turn away drop his head say I can't go in there there's no hope for me And here's what he might say the only way I could ever go in and see God is if I could be born over If I could be born different, if I could just be born over and born into the nation of Israel and born into the tribe of Levi and born into the family of Aaron and born the high priest and go in once a year with blood and see the presence of God, I'd have to be born over. You know what happened me, friend? I was like that Moabite. I could not get in the presence of God. I was born wrong. My life wasn't what it's supposed to be. But one day, I got born over. I got born again. And when I got born again, I now have access and boldness to enter in by the blood into the presence of God. I can go in. You know, you can go in. You can go in. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you've been born again, you're welcomed in. Let us therefore have boldness to enter into the holiest. Uh, let's go in behind the veil. Let's go in to the presence of God. In fact, let's go in to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We can go in. Now, let me say one more thing and I'll be done. There is the function of this fellowship. Now remember what he said, fellow citizens and fellow heirs. Here's the function of this fellowship. First of all, fellow citizens, it has to do with the immediate obligation of a citizen. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. And as a citizen of the United States of America, I am obligated to do certain things and not do certain things. But now I am a citizen of a heavenly country. And being a citizen of that country, I'm obligated to do certain things and to not do certain things. I, as a citizen of the United States of America, I ought to live in such a way that would not hinder you from enjoying your citizenship. And as a citizenship in the company of believers born again, I ought to live in such a way that I would not hinder you from enjoying your fellowship with God. I ought to consider you. I ought to esteem you better than myself. That is the function, a part of the function of this fellowship here's the last thing not only I'm a fellow citizen I'm obligated but I'm a fellow heir that has to do with the imminent ownership of the heir now Paul put it this way he said we're heirs now that's good to be an heir sometime in the restaurant I'll say to, I'll say to the waitress boy you did a good job I'm going to remember you in my will now, I always leave her a tip, but I always say that. The problem is I don't have anything to leave her. So being an heir is fine unless you're an heir to somebody who doesn't have anything to leave you. So Paul just didn't say we're heirs. He said we're heirs of God. He got something to leave me. But he took it a step further. He said, and joint heirs with Jesus. What does that mean? That means I get what he gets. Are you listening now? 
I get what he gets. You see, somebody said, preacher, I'm so tore up about all the things I'm losing in this world. Well, why don't you cheer up about all the things you're going to get in the next world? Paul said this in Hebrews he said you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing that in heaven you have a better and more enduring substance I'm going to close this sermon with this little story during the days of the Scottish covenanters who were persecuted by the state church they could not meet in a building like we're meeting they couldn't have a service like we're having they had to meet in barns they had to meet in the woods they had to meet wherever they could find a private place and so one Sunday morning a little Scottish Covenanter girl was headed to the meeting place and she, and she knew it was dangerous and everybody knew it was dangerous but she's headed to the meeting place a little teenage girl and the soldiers came out they called them the dragoons and they captured her they stopped her on the road it's Sunday morning they wanted to know where she was going they said lass where be you going this fine morning well, she didn't want to tell them the truth because she didn't want to put everybody in danger, but she's a Christian. She didn't want to lie. So she looked at that sergeant and she said, Sir, my elder brother has died. And they're reading the will. And I go to find out what he has left for me. Can I tell you something this morning? Our elder brother has died and he's left us the will and I've been in trying to tell you this morning what he has left for you. We have an intimate ownership. We're headed somewhere. We're headed for glory. Hallelujah. Thank God for the fellowship. I'm done, Brother Joe. What a fellowship, what a joy divine Leaning on everlasting arms What a blessedness, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, safe and secure from all alarm. I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, leaning on everlasting arm. Let's stand together. Father, we love you. Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor Joe Arthur from right here at the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. And I want to personally thank you for joining us today for our online service. I trust the singing, the preaching, the service was a blessing to your life. I trust that it birthed faith and hope and victory in your heart. And if you've tuned in today and you have any questions about your relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to get in touch with us. We would love to help you come to know Christ and grow in the grace of God. If you're ever in the Atlanta area, I want to extend a personal invitation for you to come and join us. We're right off of Interstate 75 south of the city of Atlanta and the beautiful Lake Spivey community. And we would love to have you come and be with us on Sunday and enjoy the service. I would love an opportunity to meet you and your family. I trust you will pray for us here at Harvest. We have a very large mission program. We're involved in a lot of different mission projects. The Lord has been so gracious in opening so many doors and we need your prayers for wisdom that God will help us follow the path that he has laid before us. If I'm ever preaching in your area, I'd love to get you to come and I'd love to greet you and let us know that you're watching our program. Again, thanks for coming by and join us again for our next scheduled program and we'll see what God will do in our lives.